Hello friends. Once a 39 year old female came to my OP complaining that she is having a bilateral hearing difficulty. And she was accompanied by her mother and carrying a boy of around 1 year of age. Uh, the patient said uh, she had these complaints or minimal uh, difficulty in hearing since last 5 to 6 years but it aggravated during her pregnancy and she was waiting for completion of pregnancy for any uh, medical advice and even after delivery and uh, her son is now 1 year of age even uh, then there is no improvement and actually she is deteriorating and the hearing difficulty is more on the right side and on asking her mother was wearing a hearing aid and she was also having the same complaint. I did a battery of test <coughs> including the uh, 24 test and uh, audiometric evaluation and came to a diagnosis of autosclerosis. It was she was having autosclerosis. So today we will discuss on autosclerosis. What is this autosclerosis? It is actually a Greek terminology. There are two words, one auto and sclerosis. Auto meaning you know, it is ear. And sclerosis meaning an abnormal thickening of the body tissue. It is a Greek word. And so autosclerosis on, uh, meaning is abnormal thickening of the tissue of the ear. This uh, autosclerosis happens only in human species and it is a disease of the bony labyrinth. You know the bony labyrinth? If any doubt of the anatomy, just go to my uh, class on uh, video on anatomy of inner ear. So this autosclerosis affects only the bony labyrinth. And which part of the bony labyrinth? The bony labyrinth has got three layers. Uh, it has got an outer covering of an periosteum outer periosteal layer and there is a middle endochondral layer that is a uh, bone of bony labyrinth bony layer and there is also an innermost endosteal layer So there is an endosteal layer, uh, periosteal layer and the inner layer of endochondral. Chondral means it is derived from cartilage. Actually this uh, bony labyrinth or the otic capsule is uh, developed from 14 centers, ossification center. And that is mainly for the middle endochondral layer where there is a bone of the bony labyrinth. And it is derived from the cartilage. And in this layer, there are some areas where the cartilage remains unossified. There are islands of unossified cartilage. This cartilage, due to some non-specific uh, reasons, they get activated to form a spongy bone. Right? So this part, endochondral bone. So autosclerosis is primarily a disease of the endochondral uh, bone of the aortic capsule or the bony labyrinth and the mature lamella bone is replaced by a newly formed woven bone or spongy bone. Well, that is why it is uh, autosclerosis is also called autospongiosis. Right? Autospongiosis. This autosclerosis uh, is usually more common in females. There is a male to female ratio of 1 is to 2. That is uh, more common in female. And usual age, uh, maybe this is a very slow progressing disease. So the age of onset um, of the uh, change in uh, remodeling may be early. But the disease manifests around 25 to uh, 30 years. This autosclerosis is usually a bilateral disease, but in 15 percentage of cases, 1 5, this can happen as unilateral also. 
Okay, so autosclerosis or the autospongiosis is a disease of the uh, bony labyrinth of or, happening only in bo, uh, human species. And there is uh, abnormal bone remodeling in the endochondral layer of the orticapsid. Okay, and this is more common in a female. And the age of presentation is usually 25 to uh, 35 years. And usually bilateral. So what is the pathogenesis of this uh, autosclerosis? I already said autosclerosis is primarily a disease of the endochondral bony labyrinth. This is a bony labyrinth. This is a cochlea, vestibule and semicircular canal. Uh, this outer layer is the periosteal layer and uh, an innermost layer is the endosteum. And between this periosteum and the endosteum is the endochondral or the uh, part derived from the cartilage. So this uh, autosclerosis is primarily a disease of the endochondral layer of the uh, bony cartilage, uh, bony labyrinth. And uh, in the hard endochondral uh, bone, some areas of the cartilage remain unossified. And due to some reason, this unossified cartilage get activated to form a new spongy bone. Okay, so that is the pathogenesis. And this uh, site of activation has got some predilections. So what are the commonest sites of this new bone formation? One is at the fissula and the fenestrum. Okay, where is that actually? This is the oval window. And this oval window is closed by the foot plate of stapes in life. So anterior to the oval window, there is a uh, space or the there is a site called a fistula and the fenestrum. It comes here. So the commonest site is fistula and the fenestrum. And it uh, autosclerotic activation or the commonest site of an autosclerotic fossae is fistula and the fenestrum. And that happens in around 80% of the cases. Here. Fissula and the fenestrum. The uh, commonest site is a round window niche. Here comes it. This is a round window region. So, uh, round window niche is affected in around 30% of cases. Okay. okay. Then uh, it can also affect the fistula post fenestrum. That like anti fenestrum, there is an area posterior to the oval window. So that is a fistula post fenestrum. Then it can happen around the um, epical medial wall of the cochlea. Okay. And then uh, it can also uh, affect, uh, affect the semicircular canal or the internal acoustic canal, all these areas. So, but the common site is a fistula anti fenestrum that is anterior to the foot plate of stapes or the anterior to the region, anterior to the oval window. That is a common site. Okay. A common type of uh, autosclerosis is the stepedial autosclerosis as it commonly affects the foot plate of stapes. But there are different types of autosclerosis also. So according to the uh, classification, according to the types, mainly you can divide it into two types. That is uh, clinical and histology. So the histological autosclerosis means the patient is uh, asymptomatic during life and there is autosclerosis is accidentally diagnosed at, uh, during the post-mortem examination. That is histological, that is uh, autosclerosis diagnosed by histological examination. And of the clinical, again there are three types. One is a stepidial. This stepidial autosclerosis is affection of the stapes foot plate. And according to the involvement, it is again divided into that is. Uh, This is the foot plate of stapes along with the. Okay. 
Okay. This is an anterior crust and this is a posterior crust. If the water sclerotic focus is on anterior part. Okay. That is the commonest site which is called the uh, fistula antifenistrum. And this is the anterior autosclerosis, anterior type. And if the autosclerotic focus is situated at uh, the posterior part, that is fistula post fenistrum, here. Then it is called the posterior type of autosclerosis, stepedial autosclerosis. And in some cases, these two parts will be, it will be situated uh, around the annular ligament or circumferentially involved in the annular ligament around the foot plate of stapes. And this type is called the circumferential autosclerosis. Okay, this is the circumferential type of stepedial autosclerosis. And in some other cases, this annular ligament will be normal. Okay. Some cases it will affect only the foot plate of stapes without involving the annular ligament and that is called the biscuit type. It will be like this only. Only the uh, foot plate will be affected without involvement of the annular ligament. Then we call it as a biscuit type of uh, stepedial autosclerosis and in some times it will be completely obliterating involving the uh, uh, oval window uh, annular ligament along with the foot plate and that is obliterating autosclerosis ok so annular anterior posterior circumferential biscuit type and obliterating autosclerosis so that is five types of the uh, stepedial autosclerosis and another uh, clinical uh, type is cochlear cochlear autosclerosis okay uh, in that case the involvement will be either in the round window niche or next common site is in the apical medial aspect of the cochlea then it is called cochlear uh, autosclerosis there the complaint is not the uh, conductive hearing loss, but it will be sensory neural hearing loss along with tinnitus and vertigo. Okay. Because it is involved in the cochlea. That is the involvement of the cochlea and also there is toxic materials are liberated into the inner ear fluid. That is why there is a sensory neural hearing loss along with tinnitus and vertigo. Okay. And in some cases, this cochlear autosclerosis shows a very rapid progression. Right? It's progressed very rapidly and in that case we call it as a malignant autosclerosis. So actually malignant autosclerosis is a type of cochlear autosclerosis. Okay. And at next one is a mixed hearing loss. Mixed autosclerosis. In mixed autosclerosis, there will be involvement of the stepedial foot plate and also the uh, cochlea, round window niche and other parts of cochlea. So what will be the complaint? There will be both uh, conductive as well as sensory neural hearing loss and also will be tinnitus and vertigo. Okay, so these are the different types of uh, hearing uh, autosclerosis according to the site of involvement. Okay. In the pathology, you can divide it into a gross appearance and histological appearance. In both these, there are two stages. One is an active stage and an inactive stage. Active stage, I already told, the uh, endo, uh, endochondral layer uh, get activated to form a new spongy bone. So the mature lamella bone is replaced by a new spongy bone. And in the starting phases, it is very active with increased vascularity and cellularity. And that we call it as an inactive uh, <clears throat> active phase. And later, this immature focus gets matured. And that phase is called an inactive phase. 
So in a gross appearance, in inactive phase, this uh, uh, lesions appear as a chalky white, greyish or yellow regions. It is chalky white. Usually uh, the inactive phase is chalky white and can also be uh, yellow or greyish lesions. And the inactive uh, phase, the active phase appear as a red areas, a red area because of increased vascularity. Okay, red areas. And red areas show a, uh, these areas appear as reddish areas. And if it is so, it is an active phase in gross uh, uh, pathology. And inactive phase, it is usually chalky white. In around these areas, you can see a chalky white appearance or uh, yellowish or grayish also. And in histology, we usually stain with the eosin and hematoxylate. Okay. So in the active phase, actually it is a phase of new spongy bone formation or remodeling, uh, active remodeling with a new spongy bone. So what happened? There is more of marrow spaces, there is more of cellularity and uh, there is more of mononuclear cells, osteoblast and osteoclastic uh, precursor cells and more of cementum will be there. So with hematoxylin and eosinin stain, uh, this region, active regions will stay blue. So it is called the blue mandrel. This active phase. Call it as a blue mandrel. It is usually asked in MCQs. Okay, blue mandrel. As seen in the active phase. So there is more of cement formation. Marrow spaces and vascular spaces are more. There is more of osteoblast, more of osteoblastic precursors and also mononuclear cells. And Active inflammatory cells are absent in that. So that is blue mandrels or the active phase. And in inactive phase what happens? There is more of fibrilla bone. The uh, spongy bone get matured. Mature bone formation. So more of uh, fibrilla uh, substance than cementum. So there is no uh, blue discoloration with the uh, antioxidant and eosin. Actually sometimes you will get a reddish discoloration with the uh, hematoxin and eosin cell. That is seen in the inactive mature phase. So in the pathology, there is a gross appearance, there is active phase and inactive. In active, it more of red color and in inactive stage, these areas are seen more of a chalky white appearance. And why this uh, autosclerosis happens? There is activation of phosphate, uh, mainly in the um, fissula antifenistra can also happen in the round window and all other areas we set and why this uh, activation occurs in some persons and not in every person in the world. So that is the etiology. The exact etiology we don't know. <coughs> why this happened? Uh, we cannot tell as a, a single cause. And if we don't know the single cause, what will we do? We uh, make so many postulations or make uh, so many hypotheses, isn't it? So, there are so many hypotheses for autosclerosis also and the exact etiology is not known. Of that, one is a hereditary. Hereditary. Because we see uh, a hereditary predominance, preponderance in 50% of cases. There is a family history in 50% of cases. So, what is it? It is an autosomal dominant with the penetrance in the range of 20 to 40 percent that has been reported okay it's an autosomal dominant and if one uh, parent is positive there is 25 percent chance of getting the autosclerosis in child and if both parents are uh, positive then there is a 50 percent chance in our case scenario i said the child uh, the lady was her mother of the lady was also wearing a uh, hearing aid for autosclerosis so it is an autosomal dominant inheritance with penetrance in the range of 20 to 40 percentage. And in uh, some studies report an uh, heterogeneity. There is more than one gene is involvement. One such gene involved is a uh, collagen related to collagen that is COL1A1G. COL1A1G. Okay, this is uh, one of the genes involved in the production of an type 1 collagen okay and this collagen is very much important uh, for the bone formation so 
this cold one A1 gene uh, involvement is also seen in some studies. And another uh, hypothesis postulated is an infection, that is measles infection. Okay. Measles infection, there is a persistent infection of the aortic capsule. This is similar to Paget's disease. Which is related to uh, which virus infection? Mesis related to autosclerosis and Paget related to paramyxovirus. Paramyxovirus infection. Okay, so there is a uh, relation between Mesis infection of the persistent infection of the aortic capsule and development of autosclerosis. And the third one is uh, relation with an osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta. About 50 percentage of the type 1 and osteogenesis imperfecta type 1. 50 percentage of the type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta develop conductive hearing loss, histological features similar to uh, autosclerosis, and also there is defect in which uh, called one A1 gene expression. Okay, so 50 percentage of the type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta shows features very much similar to that of the uh, autosclerosis in symptoms, histology and cold one A1 gene expression. And there is a syndrome related to this. What is that? Symbol type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, autosclerosis and blue sclera. What is that syndrome? It is a Van der Hoef syndrome. Van der Hoef syndrome. That is uh, type 1 osteogenesis imperfecta, autosclerosis and blue sclera. Okay. And along with this, a fourth etiology is autoimmune. For all, almost all uh, uh, diseases for which an exact etiology is not known, we can tell as autoimmune cause also. So that is autoimmune. And uh, another uh, hypothesis postulated is one is an enzymatic. That is there is an er uh, Irregular ratio of trypsin and antitrypsin in the inner ear fluid, right? That is enzymatic. Then metabolic and uh, immune disorders of the uh, patient, and there is anatomical or histological anomalies of the temporal bone. That will also uh, there is a chance of that leading to an autosclerosis. And another one is a hormonal. That is the patient um, having. An autosclerotic uh, development of an autosclerotic fossae or there is a progression of the inactive disease in case of pregnancy mainly. So there is a hormonal uh, association. So eighth one is hormonal. Okay. So hereditary uh, in association with the measles virus, osteogenesis imperfecta, then um, autoimmune. Enzymatic mainly a relation between trypsin and antitrypsin in the inner ear fluid, your metabolic and immune disorders, and anatomical or histological anomalies of the temporal bone and hormonal factors. These are the postulated uh, causes of an auto. The patient, the common presentation is a uh, bilateral progressive conductive hearing loss, which is aggravated by uh, pregnancy or menopause. It is mainly seen in females also. So uh, there is a racial predilection. What is that? The more common in whites and Indians and is rare in Japanese, Chinese and Negroes. So whites and Indians are more prone for an autosclerosis and less with the Chinese, Japanese and Negroes. And in the age group, this is uh, rare in, rare above, uh, below 10 years and above 40 years of age and commonly seen between 25 to 30 years. Okay, 25 to 30 years age group, rare, uh, below 10 years and above 40 years. And what about the sex? You know that, I already told, it's more commonly seen in females. Okay, and the hormonal effect, it's got an aggravating uh, effect or an exacerbation during pregnancy and menopause in females. And in some cases, the patient will tell you that I had a trauma before uh, starting of my hearing loss. I had, I had a trauma or an ear surgery. 
some patients will give that and I also told that in the uh, etiology there is a correlation between the anatomical or histological abnormalities of the temporal bone and also trauma related so that is trauma and what about the hearing loss uh, we already uh, seen that usually it is a conductive hearing loss isn't it conductive hearing loss because stapedial foot plate is affected and in stapedial autosclerosis we get you get a conductive hearing loss which is bilateral only in 15 percentage of cases you get a unilateral hearing loss usually it is bilateral and it is progressive also and uh, for by tuniform test also you will get a conductive hearing loss and one important uh, peculiarity of this is paracusis villisi what is that that is the patient will hear usually what happens in an noisy environment we hear little but in a patient with autosclerosis will hear better in a noisy surrounding okay how it happens what is the mechanism behind that one uh, patient or the uh, persons will increase the volume of their voice in a noisy surrounding isn't it usually when we talk and it is in a noisy surrounding we raise our voice so that is beneficial for the patient the frequency of the voice or the pitch of the voice will be increased that is one thing contributing to paracusis filici and second one there is a masking effect of the uh, noise around that so that also contribute to paracusis filici so the patient of autosclerosis will hear better in a noisy surrounding that is paracusis filici and uh, another one the voice of the patient or the speech speech will be since the patient hears uh, his or her own voice the usually the it will be a low pitched voice low uh, monotonous and a soft speech this is usually seen in patients of conductive hearing loss in all conductive hearing losses the patient will hear the own voice will be heard uh, loudly so the automatically the patient will reduce the uh, pitch of the voice so it will be a low pitched monotonous soft voice okay soft speech and what about the uh, otoscopy how will be the what will be the appearance of tympanic membrane normal cases tympanic membrane is uh, normal usually tympanic membrane will be normal but in 2 to 5 percentage of cases you will get a short sign positive what is that short sign This is seen in active uh, phase of autosclerosis that is in 2 to 5 percentage of cases uh, you will see a flamingo pink appearance or a flamingo pink hue. What happens there? This is the tympanic membrane and in the tympanic membrane your uh, stapedial foot plate comes in the posterior quadrant isn't it? Here comes the uh, long process of fingers and your stapes will be here. So in this region, in the active phase, there will be hypervascularity. So there will be a reddish hue. And this is seen through the tympanic membrane as a flamingo pink, pink appearance. And this is seen in active phase and it is called the short sign. It is seen only in 2 to 5 percentage of cases. And what is the significance of the short sign? The short sign if seen, it is a contraindication for surgery and it is an indication for sodium fluoride therapy, medical treatment. Okay. So, if uh, short sign is positive, should, you should not do a surgery for autosclerosis, right? So, that is uh, autoscopy. And in case of uh, cochlear autosclerosis, there will be tinnitus and also vertigo, right? In uh, tinnitus and vertigo, and this vertigo is more commonly seen in patients with the diabetes mellitus and hypertension. And along with this, you should uh, remember that the eustachian tube function in autosclerosis is normal. So common uh, clinical features are a conductive hearing loss which is progressive and bilateral and there will be uh, paracusis villisi and autoscopy will be normal but in active 2 to 5 percentage of cases the flamingo pink sign or the short sign will be positive 
and in uh, speech will be uh, low, monotonous and soft speech and uh, <clears throat> in cochlear autosclerosis the, this uh, hearing loss is sensory neural hearing loss with tinnitus and vertigo. You have confirmed that the patient is having an autosclerosis by the uh, typical clinical presentation of the patient and with the family history. You came to a conclusion that the patient is having an autosclerosis. Then how will you confirm? So what are the investigations to be done? Investigations. The investigations mainly we are testing the uh, hearing, isn't it? So some uh, peculiarities are there. So first investigation is Puerton audiogram. Okay. And second, impedance audiogram or a tympanometry. And third is stapedial reflex. All related to stapes. And fourth one is CT scan. Uh, high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone. HRCT temporal bone is not routinely done and uh, it is done if there is any confusion in the diagnosis and also if we are planning for a stepidectomy. Okay. What will be the picture in Puerton audiogram? If you draw a Puerton audiogram picture, there, there is, you know it is x-axis and a y-axis, isn't it? So, so x-axis is for frequency. And uh, this is frequency and this is hearing loss in y-axis is hearing loss in dB. Select. So here what all frequency is pure tone of uh, 250, 500, 1000, 2000. 4000 etc. We are looking and in uh, hearing loss minus 10, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 like that uh, we can measure. So for the right ear we use uh, plot it in red ink. Okay. So here if you do a Puerton audiogram, the bone conduction will be near normal. Okay. But there is a peculiarity that at 2000 Hz the bone conduction shows a dip. You have to remember that it is a bone conduction because the autosclerosis is primarily a disease of stapes bone. Isn't it? So the bone conduction shows a dip at 2000 Hz. Most of the time there is a confusion among you that is the it's not the air condition but it is the bone conduction which shows a dip in 2000 Hz in autosclerosis which is called the Carhartt's notch. Okay. So if you plot it 250 it will be almost normal. This is the uh, 0 Okay, so at 250 it is almost normal and it comes to around, uh, it reduces towards 500. You should not have confusion regarding this. You should know how to draw a normal period on audiogram and also audiogram in case of sensory neural hearing loss, conductive hearing loss, autosclerosis, noise induced hearing loss. All these can be asked in examination. So this is the uh, bone condition threshold, bone condition threshold of the right ear. And the 2K it shows a dip and again it will rise towards normal. Okay. Right? 
Bone conduction is almost normal in an autosclerosis, pure audiogram, but it shows a dip called Carhartt's notch at 2000 hertz. And the air conduction thresholds are increased. And mainly there is uh, air conduction threshold. The, it's more, uh, deafness is more at low frequencies. Okay. So it is more at low frequencies. Low frequency, it will be more. Okay. See, this is the uh, typical Puritan audiogram in a right ear in case of a right orthosclerosis. So, there will be bone condition threshold are almost normal with a dip at 2000 hertz that is called Carhartt's notch and also there is a low frequency hearing loss. So to start with there is a low frequency hearing loss and later on as a disease progresses it can go to high, it can affect the high frequencies also. So this is typical of, of an autosclerosis. Tympanogram you get the typical AS curve that is the pressure will be normal. This is the pressure and this is the compliance. Okay. Compliance means the mobility, mobility of the tympanic membrane or mobility of the ossicles. So that mobility is reduced, isn't it? Because of the autosclerosis, mobility of the stapes is reduced. So mobility reduced, but the pressure will be normal. So if this is a normal, if the normal uh, tympanogram is this, which is a normal tympanogram curve, which is a AS curve, uh, A curve, it's a A curve. But in an autosclerosis, you get an AS curve. Okay. That is normal pressure with a reduced compliance. That is typical of an uh, tympanogram in case of an autosclerosis. You get an AS curve. And the stepedal reflex will be absent when there is fixation of the foot plate. Okay. So in a Puritan audiogram, there is a conductive hearing loss, more flow, low frequencies with a typical Carhartt's notch. And in tympanogram, you get an AS curve and the stapular reflex will be absent if the foot plate or stapes is fixed. And in some cases, we can also do, go for a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone. It is not routinely done, but if you are planning any surgery or uh, stapedectomy and also if, you are, if there is any doubt in the diagnosis, it is better to go for a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone and in that you get a double ring effect because there is a mature uh, capsule and inside that there is an autospongiotic focus. So outside uh, a ring of mature bone and inside there is autospongiotic bone. So we will get a double ring effect in case of high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone of autosclerotic patient. Okay. Now you know that this autosclerosis causes, what are the symptoms? There can be a conductive hearing loss, there can be tinnitus, there can be vertigo. Isn't it? Sometimes there can be a sensory neural hearing loss also. So these uh, symptoms can be uh, produced by so many other diseases also. So they, the similar conditions has to be excluded before coming to a diagnosis of autosclerosis and they are called the differential diagnosis. Okay. So uh, as it causes a conductive hearing loss, the middle ear lesions come in the differential diagnosis. So one is otitis media with effusion or a secretory otitis media, isn't it? So secretory, secretory otitis media more common in children and in children it can be bilateral because of the uh, adenoid hypertrophy or so many other reasons. Okay and in autosclerosis also it is uh, bilateral and but in adulthood otitis media happen uh, more commonly it is unilateral in adult because of the some post-nasal causes. Okay. So one is OME. How can you differentiate between these two? In uh, secretory otitis media, the tympanic membrane 
again the tympanic membrane is mostly normal but there can be a hairline or there can be gas bubbles or can be a bluish tinge and what is the typical appearance of a tympanic membrane in the case of secretory otitis media it is a waxy appearance and this short sign is never seen in a otitis media uh, with effusion or a secretory otitis media and how will you differentiate what is the gold standard in the diagnosis of a secretory otitis media it is a tympanogram you get a b curve in tympanogram b curve but in an autosclerosis you get an as curve okay so that is one thing otitis media with effusion and another uh, investigation which is relevant is that it's an x-ray mastoid usually in otitis media with effusion the x-ray mastoid show less of pneumatization but so many studies reveal that autosclerosis happened in an extensive pneumatized mastoid uh, important differential diagnosis is an adhesive otitis media Adhesive otitis media again show a conductive hearing loss uh, but there are so many differences the uh, type of hearing loss is same that is conductive in both autosclerosis and uh, um, adhesive otitis media but the onset uh, regarding the onset it is usually at uh, 25 to 30 years in case of autosclerosis but its adhesive otitis media is common before 15 years of age okay and in adhesive otitis media the eustachian tube one is age here age is early 15 years around 50, less than 15 years it happens in children starts from childhood but it is uncommon autosclerosis to happen in childhood and it's more common in 25 to 30 years and the uh, uh, auditory tube or eustachian tube Function will be abnormal in case of uh, adhesive otitis media, but in autosclerosis, the auditory tube function normally. In adhesive otitis media, the tympanic membrane is always abnormal. It is retracted with an absent mobility, but in case of autosclerosis, the tympanic membrane will be normal. And also, there is no family history. Family history, uh, it's not a must in case of an adhesive otitis media. There can be a family history, but is, there is no direct link between. But in autosclerosis, there is a uh, confirmed family history will be there. And also, uh, it, adhesive otitis media is more common in males, whereas it is more common in females. So that is regarding the adhesive otitis media. And again, it is confirmed by an uh, impedance audiogram. Okay, and stepidal reflex will be present in case of an adhesive otitis media and usually it is uh, absent in case of uh, autosclerosis especially if there is a stepidal foot plate fix. Another one is a tympanosclerosis chalky white uh, areas are seen in the tympanic membrane the findings are almost similar to that of autosclerosis actually it is difficult to differentiate from autosclerosis we have to probe into the family history and also confirm by doing an impedance audit. Another differential diagnosis is a congenital foot plate fixation. And uh, this usually present as a congenital deafness. Congenital foot plate fixation. Uh, this is best diagnosed at uh, around 3 years of age. And in autosclerosis to occur at 3 years of age is very unlikely. It is rare below 10 years of age. And in um, audiogram, usually of congenital deafness, it is a trough shaped or an upsloping. Okay. It is usually an upsloping. It will be like this. And the uh, 2 kilo, uh, heads, 2000 heads. It will be better, the air conduction will be better at 2000. And trough shaped or an upsloping type of uh, audiogram you get in congenital uh, uh, foot plate fixation. Whereas in a uh, autosclerosis, there will be the characteristic AB gap will be there, and also Carhartt's notch is in bone conduction curve. And this it is highly important to diagnose this condition. 
before uh, doing a stepidectomy. Why? Because if you are doing a stepidectomy in a congenital foot plate fixation, there will be uh, there will be a chance of a perilymph gusher, and the, it will lead to the perilymph gush. If happens, it will lead to a sensory neural hearing loss. If you open the uh, foot plate, the perilymph will gush out, and later the uh, patient can go for a sensory neural. The differential diagnosis is ossicular discontinuity, especially after a trauma. Discontinuity. This uh, ossicular uh, discontinuity, the tympanogram will show an AD curve. Okay. In autosclerosis, we get a normal pressure but reduced compliance. That is an AS curve. And in ossicular discontinuity, the compliance will be very high. Okay. So the limb will go parallel to each other at a normal pressure and it is called an AD curve. That is one difference between these two. And sometimes we will need a, a CT or MRI scan of the temporal bone for confirmation of the diagnosis. And even if we cannot uh, diagnose it by this investigation, sometimes we need an exploratory tympanotomy for uh, confirmation of diagnosis of ossicular discontinuity. So before, even if you are planning a surgery, before going for uh, stepidectomy, you should always look for the mobility bar fixation or continuity of the ossicle, malleus in the stage assembly before, uh, st uh, immediately after doing a uh, tympanotomy. Okay. So that is ossicular discontinuity. And again, ossicular fixation is another differential diagnosis. Any condition which causes a conductive hearing loss can be included under the differential diagnosis of autosclerosis. These are important and along with that another important ones are a congenital cholesteatoma or a fluid or perilymph for blood uh, in the middle ear causing a hemotympanum um, or a CSF uh, in the middle ear or it can, another differential diagnosis is a persistent stepidial artery. Then Page's disease and uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. All these can be included under differential diagnosis of autosclerosis. There is no uh, curative treatment for autosclerosis. There is no curative treatment. The preferred modality of treatment is surgery. And the other modalities of treatment include sodium fluoride therapy and also hearing aids. And the role of medicine is still under uh, research. It is still debating. Okay, this uh, autosclerosis is a very easy topic. It's very simple. You know there are three layers of the uh, bony labyrinth, two uh, thin layers that is uh, from inside to outside. They are the uh, endosteum and the periosteum on outer lining. And in between there is an endochondral layer. This is the uh, endochondral layer. So inside is the endosteum, then comes the endochondral uh, layer and the periosteum. So due to some reasons, this endochondral bone, actually this endochondral bone is derived from the cartilage and this cartilage ossifies from 14 ossification centers. And some of the cartilage's islands remain unossified also. So due to some reasons, I have already told that in the uh, etiology. Due to that reasons, this uh, endochondral bone of some areas, they become actively uh, regenerating, actively proliferating. So that what happened, this uh, mature lamella bone of that area is replaced by this actively proliferating uh, cells. And this mainly happens in the foot plate of stapes and it can also happen in round window or other parts of the cochlea. And this uh, immature bone later become mature bone but it is highly thickened, thickened than usual. So what happens? There is this ossicles cannot vibrate during a sound transmission. So that will lead to a conductive hearing loss. If that happens in the cochlear region, what happens? Cochlea is mainly for the sensory neural hearing. So sensory neural hearing loss along with the tinnitus and vertigo can also happen. Isn't it?
So uh, you have to study, we have seen the uh, pathogenesis, the pathology and the histology also, the types of autosclerosis according to the sites of involvement. Uh, that it is nothing. There are some areas of predilection, so they are the uh, sites of involvement. And accordingly, there is also classification. And what are the clinical features? Clinical features are again, they are the clinical features, conductive hearing loss. Because of the conductive hearing loss, the voice will be uh, some characters for the voice because the patient hears her own voice louder. The patient will speak in a uh, soft, uh, low pitch voice, isn't it? And there will be paracusis villisi also. And if there is cochlear involvement, there will be tinnitus and vertigo. Very simple. Then, what are the investigations? We have to find out the gap. That is by audiometry. Tuning tests are also uh, should be done. And audiometry and uh, impedance. That is the measurement of the uh, movement of the tympanic membrane along with the pressure inside the middle ear has to be checked. It is gives an AS curve and the stapedial reflex because this steps is not moving properly. Stapedial reflex will be absent. So look for the stapedial reflex also. And there are some more uh, conditions which causes a conductive hearing loss. So we have to list that and we have to differentiate this autosclerosis from all these. They are the differential diagnosis. And once confirming, we have to go for the treatment. Treatment can be surgery that is the removal of the autosclerotic focus and putting a prosthetic replacement or it can be a hearing aid also hearing aid if the patient is not willing for surgery or if the surgery is contraindicated go for hearing aid and the medical medicines the role of sodium fluoride is when there is an active focus active focus means it is actively proliferating what will happen we, if you go for a surgery in an actively proliferating we have no control over the activity, so it will go on proliferating. So even if you do a surgery, there will be so many complications and the surgery will be a failure. So we have to control this activity and for that we give a trial of sodium fluoride also. So that is the role of medicine. This is autosclerosis, very simple. And after this we will discuss on the indications, contraindications and the steps of and the complications of stepidectomy and also stepidotomy. Okay.